YouTube, what is good? It is your boy Flex. And put your muscles up, because we're back with another video. So in today's video, man, we're going to be reacting to a Rory Shaw documentary. I know some of you guys have been asking for it in the comments, and I'm going to give it to you, man. So we're going to cut out all the chit-chat, get right into the video, grab your headphones, turn the volume up, get that full experience. Let's get into the video. Let's watch it. Let's go. This is Broadmoor Hospital for the criminally insane. This is where I met and married my husband, Ronnie Gray. It's also where Roy Shaw spent five years of his life. He is one hard bastard. Okay. This might be a quiet video, guys. I, like, I got everything turned up and it's still quiet. Yeah, it's a quiet video, man, so don't don't come at me about the volume. I got literally have everything turned all the way up, all right? So it's not me. It's this one. And mind you, he seems Roy very Shaw old. Shaw is one of Britain's most notorious villains. He spent over a third of his life banged up in 21 different nicks. He was a Category A man, high risk. Well, when you very first meet Roy, you know that he's a hard bastard. He doesn't, he's not a lad or brash man that's going to say, you know, I'll do you, I'll stab you, I'll shoot you. He's not going to do any of those things. But just look in his eyes and you know straight away that he's a, he's a hard bastard. He was known as the most dangerous and violent prisoner in the system. If you're unlucky enough to have Roy Shaw come after you, watch out, because hell comes with him. Do you know you got a reputation first? Well, yeah, when I walk in a place, I say, oh, sure, sure, sure. But it's, re it's a respectable reputation. What makes you angry? Something like, you know, I don't know, I bullying? Or... Like, yeah, bullying. I don't like seeing anybody bullying anybody. Mm. And mm. if I was with a girl and the summer start chatting up, yeah. I'd, uh, if, if Lear's up, you know, and um, I just want to whack him. Are you looking for? <laughs> if you're a normal man in the street, um, or a girl, or a child, then you've got nothing to fear from Roy. But if you're a man and you cross him, then beware, because you'll be sorry. He's still got this thing in his head that he can't be beat. And if you said to him now, someone nut nutted that brick out the wall the other day with their head, nutted it out, bet you couldn't do it, then he'd have to have a go at it. All men like to poke fire, spit, and have a fight. And Roy does all of those three things. Roy's got it all. A nice gaff by Epping Forest in Essex, and he drives a Bentley Corniche. But Roy doesn't like to reveal his age, and I'll let you into a little secret. He might pop a cap in me ass, but he's the wrong side of 60. Okay. Well, these are what you take every day. Show me all the pills you take every day. She said he might pop a cap in me ass. <laughs> I just want to hear that one more time, sorry. <laughs> but Roy doesn't like to reveal his age, and I'll let you into a little secret. He might pop a cap in me ass, but he's the wrong side of 60. Okay. Well, these are what you take every day. Show me all the pills you take every day. Now, this is called kelp. This helps to burn away the fat. Let's have a look. Kelp. Roy takes handfuls of vitamins to keep the lead in his pencil, all washed down with cod liver oil, and it seems to work. Ginkgo biabla. This is helps your memory. What's wrong with your memory? <gasps> Nothing, because you once take you booze. Once you get over, <laughs> over 35, you start, um, it starts fading away. I mean, you mean, sure, you know, I've got a good body, a young body. I try and try and try and look, there's no wrinkles there, and I think it's, it's, that's, a good, nice skin. that's a good body. That is A. He's looking good in there. He was looking good there, man. On the wrong side of 60. You can't beat that, for real. For a 35-year-old. For a 35-year-old, look at that. Roy's even converted his spare room. That's the gym, mm -hmm. where you have workouts. Quite often, I have, I have better workouts than now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the love palace. <laughs> and when you share Roy's bed, you can sleep easy. Because like a boy scout, he's always prepared for anything. There, anyway, uh, let it go right through you. What is it? Oh, my Lord. Where's it lead? No, it's a seasoned metal of some sort. You know, mm. I took this off a colour geezer when I was done the cricket at the pub. What, he had it? Yeah, and it's, I've, kept, I've kept it ever since. What do you say? Excuse me, can I have that? <laughs> 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 no, I'll take that off. Did you say? If anybody comes in here, they can get this through the red. Mm. In 1963, when he was in his late 20s, 
Roy was sent down for stealing 87 grand from a bullion van. That's a lot of dosh. In those days, only the great train robbers ever had a bigger touch. When he was doing the blags in the early 60s, a bank job was easy dough. There was no such thing as an armoured vehicle. It was like taking candy from a baby. We never had no gun we just had pickaxe handles. We never had to use them all at all, because they just smashed the window and keep it in anyway. They ain't, they ain't gonna fight, they ain't their money. But how did he get into villainy in the first place? Me mates that was with me, so, I mean, I was whacking people in dance halls and whatever, and they said, oh, you keep whacking people and going out to prison for, you know, just for assault and things like that. If you could do anything like that, you might as well get some money for it. So they took me on, on you know, they was at the blags, and they took me on the blags, and, and that's, um, that's how it all started. The love of his life is his rotties. Although Roy's always got a string of birds, he prefers to live on his Jack Jones. Things are so Roy's cute. Used to that, he's had plenty of practice. When I was in solitary, you didn't have no choice. You had to get used to it, mm. you know, because you're on your own. But so I used to do workouts, just to press ups up the wall, do um, press ups up the wall. You learn to just mm. just space yourself out, mm. and time just goes by. Even in the nick, a trail of violence followed Roy. The geezer all cut, cut his throat, he, he was a grass. So they've got to be done. And, and uh, I mean, you know, I've done sex cases, I've stabbed them. And we, I mean, let's face it, it was in uh, Wandsworth. And uh, a screw came up and he said, Roy, you know that bloke who raped them two little girls? He, go, yeah. he said, well, this is number 43. He said, um, when, I, when you come in off exercise, I'll be down that end of the landing. No, he's given us the wire. To, to do the geezer. So I think he was always with me. He's uh, you know, one of the crazy. Check the hat. Check the hat. He, he... Okay, I'm going to pause right here only because I kind of, uh, I, I need, <clears throat> need help, okay? Guys, I need help. It's, the video's quiet, all right? And and he, he talks like an old man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he just talks like an old man. And on top of the accent, I need help, okay? So what he's saying there is that one of the guards was pretty much telling him that there's, there's a guy that needs to get done in. Is that what I'm hearing? If so, please let me know. If not, somebody correct me. He was going to game was a bargain. And we used to wait for him. And when they come in, we used to do it. But what stuff. makes you think you have the right to do that? Well, he's just made two little girls suffer and uh, killed them. Well, well, he, he needs to be hurt. He's just got a bit of prison. And, and nowadays, they just put him in different bloody wings all together. You can't get at them. And it, yeah, we're, we're, that's, I mean, putting them in prison ain't, ain't punishment. When they kill a little kid, I mean, that, that to God, blimey, they, these, what's it called, them, pedophiles, I mean, that, that, they've got the kid there for hours, and they keep torturing him for hours. Then they kill him. I mean, you want to fall sorry for them, they, they need cutting and all that. Yeah, I, way back to I agree with him there. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I agree. Broadmoor, That's all I'm going to say. My ex-husband, Ronnie Cray, at least twice a week. It's also where Roy done five years. He was certified insane because the ordinary nicks couldn't handle him. But in Broadmoor, they could give him the liquid kosh. Pump him up with drugs, that is. Roy would go into one on the landings, start tearing down doors and throwing officers about and knocking everybody out. And there was only one place really for him to go, and that is Broadmoor. In actual fact, Ronnie Cray went to visit uh, Roy Shaw in Broadmoor in 1963, before he was um, put into Broadmoor himself. And Roy was having a bit of trouble with his wife at the time. And Ron asked him if there's anything he could do. And uh, he said he wanted the man taken care of, who was playing about with his wife. So Ron shot him, shot the man. And he went out, back up to see Roy in Broadmoor. And um, he asked him, Roy, Ron asked him what it was like in Broadmoor. And he said, it's OK, but it's full of um, gay guys. And Ron just said, good, smash him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because we, if you know, uh, what is it, uh, um, Ronnie? We know he was, you know, yeah. You know, he was into, he was into men. You know, so that that's funny. That's funny. He would he would enjoy something like that, huh? Must be honest, coming back because this is the only thing that I know about Ron is this drive here. So I think it's a bit sad. For many prisoners, Broadmoor is the end of the road, but for Roy, it was just another challenge. All right, then, is that the roof 
Where you was on? That's it, yeah. When you was so protesting? Protesting, yeah. The day, the whole day and night. Did and they have to get you down? Yeah, the coach were down. Coached you? <laughs> yeah. What, with cakes yeah. and things? I know, they got, they got a few birds out the woman's wing. <laughs> I don't think that would have coached you. <laughs> he was put in solitary, in what were called the dungeons, Broadmoor's hellhole. So they'd suck me in every factory block, punishment block, for about, uh, about six months that time. And then I'd come out and uh, think that I'd done the screws and went back for another nine months of solitary. When you say you'd done the screws, what do you mean? You'd I broke the chief's cheap bone and uh, I whacked a few of the others. And I kept sticking needles in me and then I, I was so couldn't stand up properly that I was so weak with a drug. One of them came in called Scott, I put the sardines in his face, because that was what I was on, so they nutted him. Nobody went, so they came in and gave me some more more injections and they stabbed me like a like a, uh, like a rag doll, you know, couldn't do nothing. There's one boy in here called Dawn. I'm going to go back one more time, guys. Just because I want to I wanna hear exactly what he was saying. Like I said, it's a quiet video, I okay? sticking needles in me and then I... I was so, couldn't stand up properly, like, I was so weak with a drug. One of them came in called Scott, I put the sardines in his face, because that was what I was on, so, they nutted him. Nobody went, so they came in and gave me some more, more injections, and then they stabbed me like a, like a, uh, like a rag doll, you know, couldn't do nothing. There's one boy in here called Dawn, and they let him out, and he went to a county hospital, and he, and he killed a screw in the, and I was to send him back in here. He said, he thought, well, I'm never going to get out. He said, well, would you do me a favour? I said, what is it? Would you take me in the toilet and strangle me? I said, oh, don't be silly, Bill. I said, uh, times have changed. You, you will get out. So anyway, um, I wouldn't do it. So he went to another geezer called, um, he was called something. He escaped. But he, um, he took him in the toilet because he, he was nutty, he didn't he? Put hold of it. And they held it there and killed him uh, in the... Um, in, in the toilets. So he asked you to kill him and you said no, so he yeah. asked another patient? Yeah, another patient, another patient. They had done it for him. Killed him, yeah. We've only just really scratched the surface with Roy. He's told me some terrible things that have happened to him. When he was actually in Broadmoor, they, they held him down and they injected him up through the back of his cheek, behind his eye, and just took a little bit of his brain. And I was just so shocked when he told me. But he was just, you know, well, that's what they did. But so many things have been done to him, and so many things have happened to him. It's just like thick-skinned now. It doesn't doesn't affect him at all. Since '73, Roy Shaw oh has been a free goodness. man, apart from a couple of minor hiccups. Now he's got his own website with photos of his time in Broadmoor. I've seen pictures of you, Roy, in your cell, drinking with a with a gun, a fake gun. Those things easy to get hold of in Broadmoor. Yeah, well, we had a, at that particular time, I had a bloke um, working in the stores. He used to get the drinks in for us. Had a camera in us, that's where we've got the, uh, the photos. What is know, this, a prison, bro? This is a prison it's... cell? That is a prison cell? Looks like looks like an apartment. Like that, Gun. that... Those things easy to get hold of in Broadmoor. Yeah, well, we had a, at that particular time, I had a bloke um, working in the stores. That is a freaking apartment, place. man. You got a wallpaper. The, uh, the photos. You know, uh, the, the gun, it was just a, like a, a kid's toy thing, you know. Uh, I was dangerous about it. So I just had the photo talking like that, you know, like a gangster. So I remember when I was in there with Ron, I was going in to visit him. I had like a little lighter. And I took it in with me because you're searched and so much before. But when you get in there, the security is so tight. But I kept this little gun, this little tiny derringer it was. Mm. And I sat next to him and he got a fag out and I pulled the gun out and I put it to his head. And I said, yeah. you're coming with me. And for a moment, he just froze and just looked at me. And then I pulled the trigger and the little light came out and he yeah. thought it was funny. <laughs> Coming back to Broadmoor was like taking a trip down memory lane for both of us. Oh, down there, that's the angel, yeah. That's the angel where I used to meet all the screws. When um, Ron used to want to ring me in the middle of the night or whatever, it always cost him an electric organ or a, a portable TV. And I always used to have to meet him underneath oh, the white yeah. angel, because none of these fences was here then. Yeah. I used to have to meet them, and they'd always be parked up with their boots up, waiting for their yeah. Yamaha electric organ or yeah. colour telly, or just for one phone call. 
That was the only bit where, if you look though, there's no cameras, no cameras no, at all no. there. No. That's the only place that they couldn't, um, couldn't see you. They're all up there looking at us. Mm. Hello. And Roy being Roy, there was always a girly. Did you ever yeah, have a girlfriend yeah, when you was in it? There was a young girl who used to write letters, wrote letters to each other like yeah. She was nice. Look at she was like, I don't believe I'll forget her name, but she was the youngest woman patient ever to come in here. So I think she was in there when she was sixteen. What did she do? Just someone called her um she had spots on the face and, and uh, the a kid a young kid was calling her a spotty face. So she got him and stuck his head in the river and drowned him. Because when she, and when she went to court, because she showed no emotion, but, you know, what she done it and everything, they thought she must be ill, must be sick, so they stuck her in there. Ooh, that's a cold, that's, that's a cold piece right there. Drowned the boy for calling her spotty face. But she was a, a lovely, pretty little, little, uh, little girl. She was my sweetheart. Oh, well, she sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> She's my sweetheart. <laughs> See what you gotta do. Let's burp the ice. <laughs> How are you? Roy's always out with a beautiful bird, and if it's not his latest flame, then it's his daughter and granddaughter. He's a very social person as well, and he's fun to go out with. I was out with him the other night. We had a brilliant time. I mean, you know, he's fantastic company. You know, he's really entertaining. Especially when he's himself. When Dad came out, I, I saw him as my dad, and I, I, I used to find it really weird how people used to be really uncomfortable, especially men, like when they used to see him and that, 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 how different and nervous they'd be. By then, Roy's ex wife Carolina had a boyfriend, Arthur, and Arthur was either brave or very stupid. Arthur he is, he used to work with Mum, and he was a nice man, he was a really nice man. And he came round for Mum, and of course Dad was there, and he was very uncomfortable with it. But I don't think Dad knew what was going on at the time. I went out to see my wife, and uh, the, the door was open. He was saying, well, I love you, Carol, I love you. You stay with me. And I thought, what an arsehole. And I, was, so I just went in there, pulled him out and whacked him. And my wife, uh, ex-wife, jumped, jumped on him. I'll give her a backhand. Uh. And there was a the balcony, and I just threw him over there. And as he was over there, that's when I went, cool, what have I done? Now, when Dad threw him off the balcony, I wasn't actually there. But I did go to the flat. I did go to the flat afterwards. And I saw the blood on the carpet, and I, I knew it was Arthur's blood. I knew that Dad had done it, and I knew that he'd hurt Arthur. And, um, you know, it repulses me. It's a side of him that I really, I really don't like. He's the only man I've ever really been frightened of in my whole life. But I'm not frightened of him now. Ooh. In his younger days, Roy was a brilliant boxer. And after his release, he did what he does best and went straight into the unlicensed ring. When he came out of the nick, he said he had a few thousand pounds. He said, Joe, I've got a few quid. All I know how to do is fight. Get me a fight. That's all he knew how to do. Altogether, he had 16 <laughs> fights. But the contest that went down in boxing folklore was against the undefeated King of the Gypsies, Donny the Bull Adams. Well, I trained so hard for it. You don't train three days before you fight. I know I used to train right, right up to the morning to the day of the fight. And all the energy I was dishing out of my body every day was storing up. And I was like a time bomb. Oh, you can't say it was a fight, because it only lasted a few seconds. You just walked across the ring, went bosh, bosh, left hook, bang, and right hand, it was all over. And it was so hard on the chin, the guy went out, then more jumped on him, right? But he was out anyway, when the right hand hit him. I hit him, and then I put, I ain't, I ain't, no, I pulled out, I ain't. I ain't really no energy, so I had to pick him up and start hitting him again and it's a clunky out and I hadn't spent them. Look how crazy he looks. Oh my goodness. Energy, so I had to pick him up and start hitting him again and <laughs> this dude looks freaking psycho. Oh my goodness. But I'm not getting in the ring if you're looking at me like this, man. Cause I don't know if you're gonna like I'm not sure if I'm gonna walk out alive. You looking at me like this? It's a clunky out, you know, I hadn't spent nothing. So that was the uh, result of the fight. With the dough from his fights, Roy built his own home in the Essex countryside. Then he moved up the property ladder to a monster of a mansion. But being the country squire wasn't Roy. 
Again he's sold up and bought the gaff where he lives now and this huckleberry which he rents out. He's on a nice little earner. People think that he's done it through a robbery or doing this or doing that, but he hasn't. He's, he's done it legitimately, as you can see. For this prime bit of land, he's been offered nearly two million smackaroonies. There's nothing like an honest pound now, as Roy would tell you. Especially is. <laughs> he's worth a fortune. Um, but, I mean, he, do, he doesn't want to sell this. he just hang on to it until... He doesn't need the money, so... He just hang on and hang on. Thinking of marrying him, actually. <laughs> Gold digger. And I'm not the only one. Until recently, he was seeing me mate Ashley. So I travelled north to Sheffield for a good old natter. Well, I've heard lots of people say, lots of these exes have said that it's worth putting up with all the nonsense with him because he's such a fantastic lover. <laughs> when you're with Roy, it's, you get all the trappings. He gives you a Mercedes. He buys you all the best clothes, you go to the best places, you're treated like a princess. But it comes with, um, it comes with a downside. Same as everything, I suppose. Hi, you okay? You okay? You okay? Oh, Look at you, you little skinny you? Really? Oh, I, I want to kill her. <laughs> a 40-year-old divorcee, Ashley's no shrinking violet. But even she found it difficult going out with Roy. With Roy, it was a, the minute you walked in was a statement. You know, it was like... Don't touch, don't look or anything so uncomfortable. I mean, I could even know with Roy's friends, close friends, you could tell they were that um, respect which they all have for each other, which is wonderful. But to other people who don't know and know of, they look at the floor, so I kind of felt an alien. I felt I was alone out socialising. Ashley was an extremely attractive, beautiful looking girl. And I've never known anything like it, no matter where she went or what place she was, everybody. Looks at her, not just men, women and all that. She was like a stunning model. I mean, and as people come across and want photographs took with you with Roy, you could tell that he didn't like it, or if they'd put their hand on your shoulder, he'd look, and uh, as if we, at any minute he could go off. If I'm out with you, and where I'm standing at the bar, I'm having a drink, and some kids come and say, hello, darling, would you like to have a drink with me? Now it's mugging me off, and I'm with you. So what you got to do? You get out of me. Do you think that it's... Um, the look in his eyes, because I've got to tell you that when I was married to Ron, um, I saw Ron really angry and really mad at times, and it showed in his eyes. And when Ron died, I really thought that I'd never see that look again until I met Roy. And I told him that, I said, that, you know, I never thought I'd ever see the, the look of the devil in a man's eyes like I did with Ron. And he said, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Ashley went out with Roy for over a year, and I'd say she knows him as well as any woman could. He turns serious things into humour, so that's great about him. Yeah, his personality is not something that hits you straight away. He's right hand hook, but not his personality. <laughs> so I've mellowed and sorted myself out now. So I've got everything, I've got everything going now. I've got some property and uh, I get my rents. You know, I'm successful, the business successful. All I want to do is go on holiday. It's just uh, trying to find a nice young lady now. So if anybody's out there. <laughs> is he as fit? <laughs> is he physically fit and he's as good in bed as he is fighting? That's bloody good. <laughs> and he's the best. <laughs> she got right to the point. If this is what she's talking about, here you go. These days, Roy sees more of his family. He loves taking his grandson David boxing. Dave is the same sort of thing as Dad. He's, he's very small for his age. It's very emotional. Um, he gets bullied, the same, the same sort of thing as Dad. And I think that Dad, yeah, he tries to help him, trying to be that Dad that he never had, I suppose. He's a shy kid. He, he gets bullied at, uh, at school. It's the same as I've done, and I went boxing, and it brought me loads of comments, and it's going to do the same again. <laughs> And he can see a lot of himself in David. Dad just didn't have a dad. Once he lost his dad, that's when he went on the walk. Got really emotional about when your dad yeah, died. I was just only getting really choked up now. I was only little. I remember running down the tears with my mum saying, I want to start again. You know, she's saying, no, no, no. They said, do me dead, though. Mm. And I just go, he's got like every time he comes up. Mm. I, I expect he's trying to be that person for David and trying to guide him in the right sort of way. 
and to build up his confidence and his self-esteem. He definitely does seem to understand him. All his life, Roy has stared adversity in the face. They say you can never beat the system, but the system never broke Roy, not even Broadmoor. I know, they've done terrible things to you. And was it all worth it, Roy? You was there. Yeah, you yeah. lost so much. Well, it was just to build up the circumstances, you know, you can't change it, you know, I was rebellious against the system. I mean, look, they sent me, you know, 21 different prisons because I was, I was, I couldn't fall into the run of those prisoners should be. I was just a, what do they call it, a, a troublemaker. He's not mad. He's a very, very clever man. He's not mad at all. He'd make a brilliant policeman if he wasn't a criminal, I'm telling you. He's got these rules that he would only fight a man one to one, him against a man, and that's a fair fight. And that's Roy's business. I can't say I'd take my off to Roy. I just think that he's a very strong, strong man, and I know his reputation, and I know exactly what he's all about. But he's not a bad criminal, if there is such a thing. And honestly, to answer that question, I do think there is such a thing as a non-bad criminal. You know, I think people do things uh, based on their current situation, um, their their upbringing. Um, <clears throat> I feel there's 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 multiple uh, reasons why people do what they do. You know, especially criminals. But not every single time is the person who's doing those act a actual bad person. You know what I mean? And 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 Roy Shaw is definitely uh, an example, uh, as well as well as Lenny. You know, Lenny is also a, a good example of that. Uh, like these men are, you know, they they've been through hard hard times. You know, and they had to do things to survive. And and you know, and at the end, you know, they they learned from from their mistakes. You know, they 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 grew. You know what I mean? And they're well known men. You know, they they left a legacy. And you and you and you can't go, you can't go wrong with leaving a legacy. And as a younger man, when you look at somebody who's older, and you see what they've been through, and then you see what they accomplished at the end of that, you know, it gives you it gives you hope. You know, it gives you inspiration. And that's what these guys are. They're inspiration. You know, I like, to to the people who are you know kind of doing not not on the right track or or kind of in in the life of crime. You know, psh, psh, fly in the life of crime. You know. Uh, Look at these guys. You know what I mean? Like, even though you're doing what you're doing, there's always the light at the end of the tunnel. Always. Man. Great story. Great documentary. Roy Shaw. Rest in peace. I, I believe he has passed away. Rest in peace to him, man. You guys know what to do, man. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And again, sorry for the audio quality. Wasn't me. I tried to make sure you guys could hear it as well as you could. Uh, <laughs> post in the comments down below. Smash that big red button. And until next time, man, y'all put your muscles up. It's your boy Flex. I'm out of here. Peace.